Hi, and welcome to Getting Started with Jobs, a feature within AWS IoT Device Management. My name is Dave Malone, and I am an IoT Solutions Architect for AWS. Jobs enables you to organize and trigger actions on groups of devices, making it easy to manage device fleets. For example, you can get status updates from your devices, you can remotely update your devices, and you can also set rules or criteria around your jobs to ensure automated actions don't result in widespread failures, as well as digitally signed jobs to enable greater device security. To follow along with this demo, you will need a device or devices registered and which have the device SDK ready to send jobs to. If you are following along from the IoT Quick Connect video, I will be using the same device setup later in this video. Also to follow along, we'll assume that you've already created a job file, which is a JSON document that contains information the device needs to perform a job, such as a URL where the device can go to download and update. To learn more, see the AWS device management documentation. Once you have logged into the AWS IoT console, navigate to the device management portion of the AWS IoT console. Once here, click on jobs in the left-hand navigation menu. We'll go ahead and begin by creating a job. For this video, we are going to create a custom job. Note that job IDs cannot have any spaces. Scrolling down, you'll select the devices that you want to update via jobs. There are two ways to do this. You can select individual devices or things, and you could also select thing groups, such as dynamic or static thing groups. The next step is to select a job file. This will be the payload that is actually sent to the device for processing. In this example, I've already created a simple S3 file that doesn't contain any placeholders for pre-signing or signing the code files. These are security best practices and we'll cover these in a future video. Finally, the last option on this page is to choose the job type. The first option is to use a one-time snapshot job that comes to completion once devices have reported back or timed out. The second option is to deploy continuously. Continuous jobs are useful in instances such as when you've created an initial firmware, deployed it to devices at manufacturing time, and those devices need to be updated as they come online in the field. In this video, we'll stick with a snapshot job or a one-time job. Now, we have more advanced configuration to control the job execution rollout. This is easy to reason about in a small device fleet, but as your device fleet grows, you may want to control the rate in which your job rollout occurs across your device fleet. You don't want job failures to impact your entire fleet. That's why we can that's what we configure when we want to abort jobs. There are three failure type options, failed, rejected, and timed out. We can also choose to use all or any failure types. The next choice is to choose the threshold percentage. If the threshold is met, we will automatically cancel the action altogether. I'm going to use the default settings for this demonstration today. Now that we've created our job, we're going to go to our sample device and actually process the job. Before I do that, you can observe your job status by clicking on the job. Right now, since our device is not yet online, it shows up in the queued status. On this page, I can see the status of the devices targeted to receive the job notifications. Statuses include queued, in progress, timed out, failed, 
succeeded, rejected, canceled, and removed. Knowing what stage the devices are in help people like a device or fleet operator understand which devices are currently processing an update or have failed or have reported a rejected state and so on. Now we're going to use our mock thing using the AWS IoT thing SDK for Python to process this job. In order for your devices to be able to subscribe to and process jobs notifications, you will need to ensure that the IoT policies that you are using with your specific things are correctly configured to allow them to use the jobs reserved topics. Please see the AWS IoT documentation for more information. I'm gonna go ahead and begin processing my example program here using the connected device package. This will actually occur fairly quickly here. And when I come back into the AWS IoT console, I can refresh this console page and I can see now that my device has received the job notification and has moved from the in progress state through to the succeeded state. And now the entire job shows completed. You can use AWS IoT device management to maintain and roll out OTA updates and configuration changes across very large fleets of devices.